So hi, everybody. Welcome to the University Open Source, CAS University Open Source Working Group meeting. It's great to have everybody here. I think we have some new people on the call. So if any of the new folks would like to introduce themselves, they are more than welcome to. I, I guess I won't call on you. I was always one of the people who did not like being called on. Um, so, so if you would like to, please feel free. I'll give you a second. No problem. It's great to have everybody here. Uh, so got a few things today. I think we have a, a prompt for kind of a question for folks thinking about uh, open source in their universities. Um, I did want to mention that the podcast that we did last week is complete. So thanks to Allison and Saeed. Hey, man. who else was on there? Uh, my brain clear. Zach. And Zach. <laughs> So thank you so much for uh, for everybody. And Allison, I do have to tell you, so at the end of the podcast, Allison is in Madison and she mentioned some cheese and it got the like the biggest conversation at the end. And the even the editor of the podcast said, <laughs> I was listening and my wife made me order the cheese that was mentioned. <laughs> so, is that Paul and Deanne? Um, on Wisconsin, the yeah. best cheese on earth. Yeah, I think because I think she does the us uh, the uh, show notes. Okay, she does do the show notes. Um, yeah, yeah, Deanne's the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, Allison, we are gonna. This is gonna go on and on and on, and we're gonna have to. <laughs> that one small comment is gonna live for a long time. <laughs> so and I, I and they it. deliver. It turns out we, did, we discovered. <laughs> But not, yeah. but not across the water, Dawn, unfortunately. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and Mike, yeah. I don't chat. know if any of you listened to the episode from Sustain that came out with Red Hat with Lisa Kaywood from their Osbo. She runs an entire blog based on cheese. Wow. Um, sorry, just to keep that going. I'll have yeah. to check that out. <laughs> so here is the, the link in the minutes. <laughs> and the link is also in the chat. <laughs> I love that everyone here shares my love for cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I don't know, Don, I don't know if, what the schedule is for that one to be released. It but... should go out on the 30th. Okay. So, so... so next next week. Okay, fantastic. Um, all right, next, next issue, or next thing on the agenda. Uh, I did want to let you know that I've been chatting with Claire and Richard um, between the work that's happening in Curious and Sustain. And we haven't set a time yet, but we're going to start coordinating something probably on a monthly or maybe a couple times a month basis, just so the work across the three different groups can stay aligned with one another and support each other. And we don't necessarily overlap the work for each other, because I think there are times where like the Venn diagrams could overlap and that's fine, but it just, as long as they're not three circles, just all on top of each other in terms of, of what we're working on. So I just wanted to let you know on that and other people can join that call as well. It's certainly open, um, but I think the three of us, we're just going to start that out. Okay, great. So that's that. Um, the next thing on the list, I think we have two things today, and one was uh, to really start try to start a conversation uh, as to how you're thinking about particular things within your university with respect to open source. So for those of you that are uh, new to the call or don't remember, we do have this document that we had put, been putting together over the course of 2023, which was helping to identify some of the goals that um, universities might be focusing on with respect to open source. And the idea here, right, is that not every university is focusing on every single goal. It's kind of that, are you considering thing, you know, um, around research excellence as an example here, or um, education. Um, but certain universities are focusing on certain things. So it's chatting with, with Claire, and we thought we'd start kind of focusing in on maybe a few of these particular areas. And so I think the first one that Claire and I had kind of chatted about asynchronously was considering open source as a research output within your university. So as universities are 
working with faculty, working with students, working with researchers, how open source is considered to be an output and um, how you might go about measuring or using metrics to kind of make sense of, of that output. You know, Claire, do you want to add anything to that question? No, I, I mean, I think the, the questions in the, the slide deck in that area, there's, I think there's six already there, but, but I mean, we can, we can look at those as part of this as well. Um, yeah. That might be interesting. Um, that sounds great. So are, are there, maybe I'll just kind of start, are there universities uh, here on this call or folks here on this call who are explicitly thinking about open source as a research output? Mike, you are. I, mean, I certainly am. Allison, okay. <laughs> okay, and does this, is this question kind of um, falling under your considerations at your university? You know, is this something you're thinking about within your OSPO, for example? Okay. So there does seem to be some, some yeses here. Um, would anybody kind of like to talk about how you're thinking about this as a, as a research output? open source as a research output, and I'll take notes just so we can kind of get some framing on this. Talk a little bit, I guess. I... Yeah, Mike, you're muted. Oh, someone else I heard said something. I, don't, I oh. didn't want to speak over. Oh, yeah, you can go first. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'll be quick. I would say currently the, the main way in which we're considering open source as a research output currently, just due to like where we are in our grant funding cycle, is uh, in terms of like fundable research activity. So like essentially the main calculation we're doing is like what is all, like what is the market cap in the university research ecosystem of like NSF funding, private foundation funding, that can go towards what we consider open source activities. Um, and in particular, we're thinking about like adjacent work. So mm -hmm. uh, work that related to community building, to uh, like developing of open source institutions, to ensuring uh, translation across groups and stuff like that. Um, this largely is because our president uh, has kind of came to us and said like, you know, I want to understand the numbers of this open source thing from a financial perspective, um, you know, leaving behind any sort of like uh, pedigree of open source versus non open source. Does that make sense? I think so. So um, I don't know if I'm getting this right. So you're, you're trying to understand the research activity that is funded to do open source work. Is that right? Yeah, we're trying to understand the amount of funding for that research activity. Okay. Um, so we know the research activities around open source are like production of the work, uh, like collaboration uh, in like developing infrastructures and processes and stuff like that is, is work that you know helps assist open source in a variety of ways um and we are interested in seeing what is like the funding available for that work okay and so the, how much... are the are the measures the um the amount of dollars that have been received at rit for example to support those activities yeah, the amount of dollars okay. received at RIT and the amount of dollars that have been funded globally, right? Okay. Like, uh, yeah, so this is like the market cap, right? Uh, I see. At so it's like relative to the to all available funding. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. That's helpful. Stephanie, I do see your hand. I, I think Allison had a comment as well. That's okay. Didn't raise my hand. Should have. That's, that's okay. <laughs> but, um, I can, yeah, just talk a little bit about sort of how we frame things as well. Like in, in addition to 
um, you know, bringing to people's attention all of the moves towards open source software and, and, you know, sponsored research and funding and things like that. That's something we're interested in as well as, um, you know, in the research enterprise who is, you know, funding open source things and, and how are things like, you know, OSTP and things like that impacting um, open source as well, but also just framing, I guess, the OSPO is sort of analogous to what libraries do for open access publishing and open data and things like that. You know, we're sort of that administrative support hub for open source because historically software hasn't really been as quickly and readily acknowledged as a, as a, a sort of research output or even byproduct. Um, and so in a similar manner to how libraries support open data and um, open access publishing, and I know a lot of OSPOs are actually housed in libraries as well. Um, but, you know, becoming that arm for for that sort of work in the software space, um, supporting software as a research output publishing, research and tenure and promotion potentially, as well as, um, you know, supporting it in terms of, you know, how do you publish this and, you know, what's what's going on, you know, what does translation look like for for software, how is it different from other sorts of things? Um, but yeah. Allison, do you do you also like Mike? Are you tracking the dollars that are being received at the university in relation to open source work? Yeah, we're we're looking at you know who's doing that work on campus as well, and and who's um, received funding. There've been a few people, um, but I think more so at the moment thinking about how we, I guess, frame open source in this mes message of research to people, you know, like this, you know, getting funding for this is possible. <laughs> people have done it before here and in other places, um, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, I think this is, Stephanie, I'll get you next, but I think this is interesting so far that like two of the comments have been around funding and the relationship of, of do available dollars um, that are yeah. brought into the university to do open source work. Um, yeah, Stephanie. Oh, go ahead, Allison. Did you have a comment? Like to, to that point of funding is, is like, you know, for better or worse, I think that is one of many metrics of sort of like legitimacy, I guess, of how research is conducted and, and what people are doing in the world. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. And um, I'll have a comment on that. And if, if everybody keeps talking about funding, <laughs> because it's an interesting observation. So Stephanie, yeah. No, I definitely is funding is something that we're looking at. We uh, also kind of similar to what uh, Michael and Allison are talking, we're looking at the tracking as well. Uh, of like the funding coming in. But we also look at it, so one of the ways that we're trying to um, set ourselves up here at, in Santa Cruz is as kind of what's in between uh, tech transfer or you know the IP office and research development. And that, and so what we're trying to do is capture all the stuff that doesn't necessarily lean towards, let's say, you know, the, a commercialized, uh, like a patent. So it's not to say that we are better. It's just that some things work or are going to uh, have a better pathway and a larger impact if they would come through an open source, like through, come through open source versus come through a, a commercial channel. So that is kind of also the way that we're looking at it from a research, kind of what you're saying, like this research output is that um, until we come along, we've come along, this is how we're at least framing it. It's like until we've come along, a lot of these projects just kind of end or they don't have an output or they just kind of sit there in some dead you know repository or website or something whereas our point is we can connect it to somewhere something external um so we are so the open source is that pathway and so i think that's uh that's one way we're framing it as why it's important to have an ospo in particular in at ucsc and uc in general but also and then from the funding perspective yeah it's also like now that we have this pathway, then we have external uh, entities, be it foundations or NSF or you know whoever, who is now you know and, and industry for us, it's a lot. It's like looking to industry that now we are 
uh, UC researchers are able to kind of interact with uh, industry uh, more effectively because they have this open source option where, you know, you don't have to have an NDA. You can work with multiple um, industry folks at certain, you know, certain levels of research. And it's, you know, it's something that industry is happy to work with because it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it gives them the ability to kind of expand their own research uh, enterprise and help them overall. So I think there's a couple different things that we do with regards to um, that. That uh, it's a little. So we do. We are definitely looking at the funding side, but we're also looking at, you know, the the research impact, the long term impact of the research done here at at, at, at on campus and okay. at the system in general. And am I so I think I have this right that it's yes on the funding, but also trying to connect with folks who are doing open source research as part of that, the tech transfer process and trying to- It's our side, like in showing that, I don't think people realize they may be doing something in open source and not quite realize that, oh, I there's see. another community or there's another pathway that they can use that um, they just haven't thought of because it's just, it hasn't been, a, you know, I seen that. so I, it's just creating a different, a, a multiple, multiple pathways. And, you know, basically what we've said to our OR is, oh, well, 5% of uh, your office of research is well five percent of you know let's say you know just random number five percent of the stuff coming out of UCSD is probably going to go to the IP IP office and we may make patent money off the of patents that other 95 percent shouldn't be lost and that's where the open source office comes I got you from. okay that makes sense thank you Stephanie so uh Claire I think your hand is up also so Arbus is up as well uh, Lorena yep mute there sorry um yeah i i just want to make the comment about um maybe the, the 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 viewpoints as well as to when we think about research uh open source as a research output because some of these discussions have been from the university perspective like for example that funding discussion might be from the university perspective and i wonder is it worthwhile to actually differentiate between the university perspective and then maybe the researchers perspective as to what they might be interested in terms of measuring as well um and 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 some some fit in both. So to maybe build on what Stephanie said, if, if if I was thinking about it from a researcher's perspective, thinking about open source software as a, as an output, you, you'd probably be definitely interested in in talking about the impact of your research. So you'd want to be able to measure that, um, both in terms of um its 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 use within the scientific community, its potential. Um, commercial impact, its potential social impact. So they may be uh, various different aspects you might want to consider, um, which brings us back to this whole idea of how do you, you know, is is there is there a system for um, acknowledging open source software in the same way as there is for citing papers and counting references and being able to do that? So I'll, that's a, that's a whole area there. Um, and then the, the other thing that 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 um, I want to also uh, double down on because I think it's important in this context is that collaboration aspect that 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 idea of being able to demonstrate or count where you might have software that has had um, that has a particular type of contribution coming say from other industry partners and things like that I think that that just from a recent conversation I know that that is is relevant for people so that's a very specific example. What is this? Um, what is this, Claire? Could you explain So this that? idea, this idea, so it's building on what I think Stephanie said around the idea yeah. of industry collaborations. Um, it seems to be quite important for both individual researchers and for universities to be able to demonstrate that the research that's coming from their institutions is having an immediate impact in industry or there's connections being made into industry. So these, these are pathways, as Stephanie described them, for demonstrating impact that's not funding related, for example, or, or it's not... Um, spin out related or IP transfer you. money related. Yep. Um, and then the last thing that I thought of was um, was around the idea of open research, because um, again, from a recent conversation around how open source software plays that part within open research. So I suppose for me, I, I'm not I'm you know, I'd, I'd love to be able to as if you were a researcher, I'd love to, I think that they might be interested in understanding how how to measure if their project delivers what's required for open research in the context of software. Like, is it, is, is my open source project enough? Like, is it, is it, is it, is it, has it got all the right bits to be, to help my, my research be reproducible um, or applicable? Yeah. You know, so, so that, that idea of how, how do I measure the health of my 
project? Do I, you know, that that might be of interest to people um, uh, over over time, and 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 also this idea of of measuring the health of a project in the in my context. So, if I'm developing something for you know the scientific Python community, I probably have different expectations around what healthy means than if I'm building something that has a tiny niche audience in I don't know, pick a niche audience cheese gratification i don't know but the point being that 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 that, it, that turns out that's a huge audience so maybe that's not the right answer but if you have a niche audience your healthy project may look very different in terms of what healthy looks like than if you're in a particular in a different domain so i suppose the question i have in my mind is if you're measuring the health of an oss project as a research output you know you have to think about a context specific maybe that's it Great. This is really, this is really great. Um, Lorena, thanks for being here. Uh, thank you. I realize now that um, um, I don't know everyone in this call. Um, I'm uh, the faculty director of the new OSPO at George Washington University. David Lippert is right here. He's the, uh, um, the program director. And uh, so our OSPO has just gotten uh, started recently, so we don't have anything to report in regards to influencing the uh, promotion and tenure or the uh, um, uh, credit given to software outputs in research, but certainly that is a concern of ours. Uh, but what I wanted to say in uh, relation to the previous discussion of funding uh, and software as a fundable research activity and the possibility of measuring the dollars coming in for funding software efforts and work. Um, from my point of view as a computational scientist myself, uh, with more than a decade of actual, you know, the, the being being in the in in the in the ground uh, of this, if you will, what I wanted to highlight is that a straightforward measurement of the dollars coming in for software effort is always gonna be an underestimate because if I look back at my own career, since the time I graduated from with my PhD until now, I have always, every single project, every single funding that I have received as a researcher has produced software, but it wasn't originally, uh, um, earmarked as funding for software. I wrote grants, research grants, and basically the software work is, you know, folded in and 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 part uh, and parcel of what we do on an everyday basis. And my students are writing open source software and participating in open source all the time and they get jobs because of those skills. But that is not the it's not you know, there's a little, small little blurb somewhere in the proposal that we're going to release our any software that we uh, generate in an open source fashion, but it's certainly not the main um, reason why it was funded or it didn't go into a software call or it would, you know, and I could look back to all of the funding that I received and say the same thing. So I suspect there are a lot of people out there that would fall into that same category. I think that's, that's a, it. Yeah, that's a great point. So if making sure I got this right, that the the taking trying to take a look at funding is likely an underestimate because the proposals that go out are often aimed at a particular research endeavor, not necessarily the development of a piece of software. And so the the, the open source software component might actually be hidden in a in a larger funding proposal that's aimed at something else. And even honestly, sometimes we have the goal of writing specific software uh, products, but we don't say that that's what we're going to do. We cover it up and wrap yep. it up in a nice yep. little bow of research questions uh, because otherwise it's not going to be funded, right? Yes. Uh, because it will get... <laughs> It will get reviewed as, uh, and I had the experience of rejected proposals where the review said, oh, this sounds only about implementation. You know, sure. that's the yeah. classic. Uh, so then you rewrite the, the thing. Uh, everybody's doing software work, but you yeah. also publish papers. <laughs> Uh, no, that's completely fair. You you write it as a, a theory development piece of some sort, <laughs> some other empirical piece. That's completely fair. Um, do you, so this is it's a good point. Are you 
Is this something you're thinking about within your OSPO? As I said, we just gotten started. We okay. haven't had any of those discussions. And <laughs> okay. I, it just is a reaction that I had right now sure as is. a working computational scientist to the previous discussion about funding, because I think that if we are interested in actually measuring things, uh, we would lose the biggest cut if we don't consider the fact that software is sometimes blended into other- uh, Fair enough. To, to <laughs> grants awarded for other, yep. for other things on paper. It's a great point. Thank you. Uh, Daniel, you have a comment, question? Uh, just to sort of yeah. reiterate on the comment about partnering with industry and seeing the work that we do as sort of um, workforce development pipeline development, um, that that conversation has actually been really valuable in helping us work with our research marketing people uh, and bridge gaps with the university-wide marketing people who are interested in communicating to prospective undergrads uh, what the intent is. And the the university-wide marketing people don't necessarily have research on their radar. And historically, it's been like a, a very significant um, challenge that they don't see themselves as being responsible for marketing research, um, that they see, for, for us as an institution in particular, they see their primary audience as being, you know, that the undergrad student um, and not necessarily the broader ecosystem and the other roles that the university provides. Um, but then to <laughs> circle back and piggyback on what Lorena said as well, um, I think one of the things that it points out, what you're saying points out to me is just this broader challenge of recognizing that projects are not ultimately valuable in the sense that they don't provide long-term value and that getting funders to recognize that uh, projects have limited impact and what everybody really wants is products and platforms to borrow the language of product development um, and that creating those opportunities for long-term sus sustained investment really ends up from a philanthropy and investment standpoint, from a dollar standpoint, it seems like um, the only way that that historically seems to to get funded is that somebody is funding a person uh, that they trust and believe in or a, a product or platform that they trust and believe in um, rather than an individual project, which I think speaks to the what some describe as the brokenness of NSF funding as a model, um, how that works. But. So fair point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but on several panels where I think I've seen that exact thing happen sometimes <laughs> where funding can go towards a person and not necessarily towards a project. Right. And I, I think there's, there's a, a tension that you, that there's is in play because to, to be successful, the research needs to be funded in the long-term sense. Um, but you also want to keep it open to new researchers and new participants in, in any given field. And so finding the right, like and and OSPO seems like a nice bridge. On it. We're we're a band aid in a way, uh, to some of these concerns. Um, that like I don't know. I I've definitely seen our role as trying to connect across individual funding cycles in some way and and be that um, that connective tissue that makes long term success possible. I'll shut up. I was just, I was going to say like, in a classic open source sense, uh, you know, to your, to your point that, you know, we should encourage faculty members to go work upstream at the NSF and make changes there. So, so, so that downstream, it can help us a little bit. Yeah. I, I mean, I think, the new tip directorate and some of the efforts around some of those things are definitely good. It's just, it's a, it's a big enterprise there. Yeah, no doubt. Um, did I get the workforce development thing, right? That it's about kind of helping, helping communicate this open source work. So as, as faculty are doing this work and having an impact in the world is how I understood it, that that could be communicated back to incoming students. Yeah. And I think Lorena mentioned this and, and, um, Stephanie mentioned this as well, that like there are opportunities to just like build a direct connection with a company that like 
somebody already has experience, they show evidence that they know how to work, they get a job out of, directly out of the work. Okay. And the work itself may or may not be directly related to what the company does. It may actually be more research oriented. Um, so it's a it's a classic win win. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, Mike. Yeah, I wanted to um, build on what Lorena said relating to fundings, not necessarily uh, directly towards software, but like it comes out of other research endeavors. Because I thought that was, I mean, really well put and succinct. Um, one thing that we're kind of, I don't know, if struggling with, but like trying to tackle right now is... Uh, you know, as as Lorena put it, and Lorena, feel free to interrupt if I'm getting this wrong. But like in a lot of research endeavors, you're trying to accomplish answering like a specific research question, and in order to do that, you need to like write software. Uh, and what researchers end up having to do is kind of like in the seams of all their like real research work, produce all these artifacts like software and related infrastructures and documentation and systems to collaborate on it in order to re reach that question. Um, and so the case that we're trying to make is that this is real valuable work and necessary to produce good science and to create like a well-functioning scientific uh, institution, right? Now, the pushback that we get is, well, why are you needed for this, right? Like, uh, isn't this just all research work? Like, this is just all, this should all be encapsulated in the average overhead that any researcher should do. Just like how researchers write the, their grant, you know, they're gonna manage their own open source software because it's related to their work. Um, and so I think when, certainly when we're looking at the dollar amount, we're looking at funding specifically for, well, we would say is almost like non-research related software work, right? Work related to the infrastructure of research, but not actually producing the research itself, which I know it's like a fuzzy line. Um, and this is kind of like why we're looking specifically at funding of things like community building and pose and, you know, stuff like that. Great. Uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, David. Hi, um, Michael is starting to touch on some of the things that that I'm my naive <clears throat> approach <laughs> is of understanding is, is that this should be um, if we have a reproducibility crisis, and NSF and other groups are starting to recognize that and they're starting to demand that you have make your software available and your data available. So to me, it's it's almost a mandate top down. Maybe it's not like individual grants are doing that mandate, um, but that's what I want want to see, why I want to see open source software as an output, a research output, because it has to be to make the science, open science and reproducible. Gotcha. Uh, is that something that you're trying to take on at the OSPO? Is this like a policy change you're hoping happens? You know, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it all comes down to money. So, you know, we we're focusing on the getting grants and helping people get grants that in and using the open this open language. And my belief is is that the, a lot of these researchers don't know how to share their code. And we don't, like Stephanie and Claire was saying, we don't want it just stuck on their laptop. We want it to survive them and be available to others and and shared in a community. And that's not easy. Doing it on your laptop is easy. Sharing it is really hard. Once you add a second person, it's really hard. And so there's a lot of work to be done to educate people on how to do that. I couldn't agree more. Community building is super hard. Um, I had somebody once told me, right, that open source is just a licensing designation. <laughs> if that's how you treat it, then, <laughs> you know, that it's just a, a something on top of it, telling people how to use it. So um, I don't agree with that. But uh, Stephanie, 
I just want to iterate, I think, um, what David was saying, but also what uh, uh, Daniel said in the chat, which is this time is money thing. And I think that that's a huge, and I think that builds on what we were talking about earlier is that um, the idea of these, the the, re the research infrastructure or software that's being created in by each individual project and not being shared across, I think is, is, is a key value to, I mean, a key uh, way of showing value, I think, of oh, making sure open source is open, that we can actually show and, and different projects can reuse and re reuse and reproduce the, these things. And I think that's a critical part that needs to really uh, make, come out of come out of the meeting chat and kind of is I think more of a discussion point because it's not just about the money as per se as I'm spending this money, you know, I'm getting this grant because whatever the you know, open source is in it, but it's the idea that I can more effectively use these grant dollars if I don't have to recreate this thing that's already there that somebody else did, but I don't even know about. So it's that kind of highlighting that value and highlighting those type of um, activities that I think is really key to um, like OSPO work, but also just OSPO, you know, open source in general in the in, in university and at research settings. I appreciate that. Yeah, sorry, I have not been watching the chat. <laughs> I can't do what things, but there there is, um following this, there is a transcript, as you know, that will come out and I'll take a look at that transcript uh, as well. Uh, so I just, you know, at a first glance, I, I think there are a couple of really kind of interesting things um, listening to y'all talk. Um, there are certainly, I think, in the open source sense, some issues of of upstream, taking a look at how we can understand the upstream, particularly around funding, and how that uh, impacts us at the university level, uh, as well as the downstream, as our own projects having an impact downstream. So what I'm going to do is I'll take the conversation here that has come up, uh, as well as the transcripts, and I'll try to reduce it down to something that I can sh share with you all. I think this will give us a good place uh, to start thinking about how uh, we can measure success in certain areas. We're talking about how you all might be measuring success in certain areas or improvements. Um, so I really appreciate that. So thank you. Uh, I'd like to use, we have nine minutes left on this. So Claire, I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot. Are you still around? I am sorry. I'm I'm just uh I'm just in a different room, so I have to turn off the camera there. <laughs> How you okay. doing? No problem. Good. So uh, for those of you that that don't know, we have ChaosCon, a, a semi-annual uh, conference that we run for the Chaos Project. Uh, and in the Chaos Project, we work with a lot of different groups, not just universities, um, but also uh, corporations, uh, corporate OSPOs, scientific software communities, and the like. So. But as part of ChaosCon this year, we are focusing a bit on academic open source. And Claire is going to be running a session. And I, I would just like to give you an opportunity, Claire, to talk about the session you're going to run in the afternoon and just any feedback that people might have or things that people might want to you know, hear back from you after the session is run if they can't attend. So Claire, you want yeah. to? Yeah, that. so 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 this is this is currently under planning as to as to what we exactly cover. We have a two and a half hour session in the afternoon of ChaosCon. Um, last year we had a really good turnout. I think we had about twenty four people in the room. Um, again, um, most people had not been involved in these discussions about this before, but they had come from universities where they were involved in open source and in whatever which way, often as individual researchers. And then there were folks from this call here that were there, uh, like Matt and Sean, I think you were there as well in person. I think there were, at Dawn, you were there. Uh, so there was, a, there was a good few people who then, I mean, it was, it was, it was one of the reasons why we set up this group then to follow through on, on some of the discussions. And certainly a lot of what we learned from that meeting last year is actually, um, you can see it in the feedback in the metrics model we have. So the question is, I mean, for me, there's going to be a bit about sharing where we're at with the metrics model as 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 Matt, it, it currently looks like in, in the slides you've you've shared before um, with this community and getting their feedback on that. Um, and then I, I was hoping that we'd get some of this discussion going at that workshop as well to get a more diverse set of input from people around all of these areas, both in terms of the questions that they are asking around these areas um, and then more recently, I was thinking about thinking about the tools we want to, um, you know, thinking about what maybe tools they may have in place 
uh, or or anything like that as well would be another question I might ask. But I, I'm I'm interested in in your input and your feedback on what might we cover in this session, uh, considering that this will be a, may have some people who are relatively new to the area and. I just lost you, Claire. I lost her as well. Well, let me pick it up then. <laughs> is is she still on? Are you still on, Claire? Okay. Can you oh, not hear me? Oh, you're, I, I can now. You're back. Oh, sorry, I'm back. Yeah, no, I was, that was just opening that up to see if anyone had feedback or if you heard me describe that, if that was okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm on the move around the house here. <laughs> no problem. So I guess the, the question from, from Claire is, you know, would this be kind of a good motivating question, at least for you, pretending you would be there, you know, for two and a half hours? And, and I think just, I suppose, to clarify that, that wouldn't be just one question, right? The idea would sure. be that you'd take this in, in four separate blocks around the four topics that we've described in the, in the metrics model so far. So it'd be kind of looking at a possibly a, a way of addressing this and then multiplying by four across the various different topics. So is your idea, I'm going to move this out of the way. So the idea is to take a look at this. Is that right? Exactly. Okay. And say... Basically, do you, like, are you, as a member of this afternoon session, concerned about any of these four things? And then if so, how are you going about kind of addressing them? Is that correct? Exactly. And even thinking about that idea of capturing the goals people might have around this, and then mm -hmm. thinking about if they are currently thinking about it in any with respect to how they might think about metrics related to that, and if people are using metrics, if they have any experience of actually thinking about how to measure success in these areas and, and, and you know, grabbing that kind of thing. Okay. Well, to me, that makes, to the, me, that makes sense. Are we going to have a, are you going to have a, uh, like a note taker there as well? I mean, I could help you. That would that. be, that would be excellent. I was, I was planning to record <laughs> it and do some AI magic at the end, uh, I know. But, uh, but I would very much appreciate it, Matt, if, if, okay. uh, if you were too. <laughs> I can also help as well. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank yeah, that would be really helpful because I think that would be, it's basically just kind of a, a closer look at each one of these four areas. And I think if we can bring some of that back, uh, that would be really helpful for folks. Yeah. And I think one of my goals would be to even recruit more people into this group. Um, yeah. So, uh, the you know, when we were there last year, we didn't have this group to point people at. Mm -hmm. So I think this will be an opportunity to to let them know that that's the case and get more folks. Do you have any sense of how many people are coming? Because there were people question. last year, there were people last year that didn't come to Chaos Con. Like, I don't think they really sat much in the day. Maybe they did. I don't remember. Elizabeth, I, I don't know if you have any update. I haven't seen any numbers. We have uh, 46 registered for Chaos Con overall. Um, we did ask folks what they would prefer, but we didn't make them sign up for individual workshops. So, um, but I can look, I'll, I'll check and see. Okay, no, I think this makes sense, Claire. Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll flesh this out in terms of the I, I, yourself and, and Dawn and the folks in the Chaos Con did a really nice kind of summary of how you do the feedback session. So I'll try and frame something like that uh, for the workshop to give it a little okay. bit more structure on, the, on that. Okay, no, I think that sounds great. Okay, super. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks, Claire. And I look forward to seeing you in Brussels. Me too. That'll be fun. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, uh, I really appreciate the conversation today, everybody. I think, you know, maybe in a couple of weeks we can focus in on a on one of the other areas of that that model, that circle model, and just kind of see how people are thinking about, for example, um, curriculum, open source curriculum in, in the university would be another example of, of things we could talk about. So really appreciate you coming, really appreciate your, your feedback and your thoughts. So take care and have a great day, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.